Hi friends, happy holidays. So how many of you are fans of the movie classic, It's a Wonderful Life, starring Jimmy Stewart and Donna Reed? It's one of my favorite holiday movies and I recently watched it again and it was, it was the colorized version, which I had never seen before. And it was like watching a whole new movie. It was even better than the original black and white, I think. If you haven't seen the colorized version, give it a try. I think you might like it. So anyway, as I was watching the movie, I realized that I had visited the grave sites of some of the cast members, but not all of them. So I thought, well, you know, that might be kind of fun to see how many more I can find. So over the last uh, week or so, I've been driving all over Los Angeles looking for the grave sites of the other cast members, and I'm happy to say I found quite a few of them. So if you're interested, keep watching. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to if you've ever attended the Coachella Music Festival here in the Palm Springs Desert area where I live, then you were just a few blocks away from the Coachella Valley Public Cemetery where director Frank Capra is buried. Capra died September 3rd, 1991 at the age of 94 from a heart attack in La Quinta, California, which is just a few miles away from the cemetery where he's now laid to rest. During his film career, he received six Best Director Academy Award nominations and won the Oscar three times. He won for It Happened One Night in 1935, for Mr. Deed Goes to Town in 1936, and You Can't Take It With You in 1938. He was also nominated for It's a Wonderful Life in 1946, but didn't win. Many of his films are now considered movie classics and some of the most popular movies of all time. And he's considered to be one of the most influential directors of all time. I'll include a link down below this video to a map of the cemetery in case you'd like to see where his grave is located. And I'll do the same for the rest of the graves that I'll be showing in this video. Jimmy Stewart died July 2nd, 1997 at the age of 89 in Beverly Hills, California from a pulmonary embolism. He's laid to rest at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California. And to find his grave, you enter through the front gates and go to the end of the street, make a left, and his final resting place is up on the top of the hill to the right. Stewart appeared in nearly 80 movies during his 60-year-long movie career. He was also the first American movie star to enlist in World War II and became the highest ranking actor in military history. He was nominated for Academy Awards five times and won the Oscar for the 1940 movie, The Philadelphia Story. In the movie, It's a Wonderful Life, Stewart plays George Bailey, a man who has spent his entire life sacrificing his own dreams in order to help his family, his friends, and his town. On Christmas Eve, his world comes crashing down, and he believes that the best way to help his family, his friends, and his town is to take his own life. But his guardian angel, Clarence, played by actor Henry Travers, has other plans for George. Travers is also buried in this cemetery. His final resting place is in the Great Mausoleum, it's just down the hill from Jimmy Stewart's grave, and you can just about see it. Unfortunately, the Great Mausoleum is private and not open to the public. But here's what it looks like from the outside. You may recognize it as the final resting place of singer Michael Jackson. Travers appeared in more than 50 movies and died on October 18, 1965 at the age of 91 in Hollywood, California from arterial sclerosis. In the movie, actress Donna Reed plays George's wife, Mary Bailey. Reed died January 14, 1986 at the age of 64 in Beverly Hills, California from pancreatic cancer. She's buried here in the center lawn section of the Westwood Village Memorial Park in Westwood, California. Donna Reed appeared in more than 40 movies and even won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress in the 1953 movie classic From Here to Eternity, but she'll probably always best be remembered for her role as Donna Stone, the mother in the Donna Reed TV show that aired from 1958 to 1966. Also in the movie was actress Gloria Graham. 
she played bad girl Violet. From an early age, Violet had her eye on George, but George only had eyes for good girl Mary. Graham died on October 5, 1981, at the age of 57, in New York City, from peritonitis. She's buried at the Oakwood Memorial Park Cemetery in Chatsworth, California. She appeared in nearly 40 movies and won the Best Supporting Actress Oscar for the 1952 movie, The Bad and the Beautiful. In 2017, a movie was made about her life starring Annette Bening, and the title was Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool. The miserly Mr. Henry Potter, who plays the bad guy trying to put George out of business, is played by veteran actor Lionel Barrymore. Barrymore died November 15, 1954, at the age of 76, in Van Nuys, California, from a heart attack. Barrymore won the Best Actor Oscar for his role in the 1931 movie, A Free Soul. He's also well remembered for playing Dr. Leonard Gillespie in 15 Dr. Kildare films. But he's probably best remembered for his role as Mr. Potter in It's a Wonderful Life. Actress Lillian Randolph played Annie the Maid of the Bailey household. And even though the film came out in 1946, two decades before the Civil Rights Movement, it was nice to see that her character wasn't a stereotype that was so typical of the times. In fact, she was a very valued member of the Bailey family. According to her Wikipedia page, Randolph died September 12, 1980, at the age of 81, in Los Angeles. For some reason, her gravestone has her death date listed as September 11th and her birth date listed as 1914. Her Wikipedia page has her birth date listed as 1898. So I'm not really sure which is accurate. During her career, Lillian Randolph was one of the busiest entertainers in the business. She was a singer and an actress and she appeared in hundreds of movies, radio shows, and TV shows. And she was even a voice actor on the popular Tom and Jerry cartoon TV series between 1940 and 1952. She played the character Mammy Two-Shoes. But she might best be remembered for her role on the Amos and Andy radio and TV show as Madam Queen. The popular show ran from 1937 to 1953. Later in her career, she guest starred on shows like Sanford and Son and The Jeffersons, and she even had a role on the historic 1977 African-American-themed miniseries Roots. Samuel Hines was another very busy actor. He appeared in more than 200 movies during his long career. In the movie, he plays George's dad, Pa Bailey. His death causes George to put his own dreams and career on hold so he can take over for his father and run the family business. In real life, Hines died October 13, 1948, at the age of 73 from pneumonia in Pasadena, California. He's interred at Inglewood Park Cemetery in Inglewood, California, and his crypt is located inside the Inglewood Mausoleum, just inside the front door to the left. I'll pan around so you can see just how close his family crypt area is to the front door. It's a Sunday morning and I'm here just as the sun is coming up and I'm standing in front of the uh, Chapel of the Pines. In fact, let me go stand in front of the sign so you can see it. And unfortunately, I just discovered, I think you can see it there, just discovered that it's not open on uh, weekends, Saturday or Sunday, which seems kind of odd for a crematorium and columbarium. Most people, I would think, would visit a columbarium on the weekends, but apparently not. This is downtown right here, downtown Los Angeles. So in a way, it really doesn't even matter that it's not open. So two of the cast members 
from It's a Wonderful Life were cremated here and are in voltage, which means they're not available, not open to the public. H.B. Warner, who played Mr. Gower, you might remember at the beginning of the film, young George works in a drugstore, soda fountain drugstore, and Mr. Gower, he's distraught and distracted, not paying attention, and instead of filling a prescription for someone with their regular prescription, I believe, if I remember right, he accidentally filled the prescription with poison and young George discovers what's happened and prevents this from turning into a deadly incident. So he's, his ashes are interred here, but again, not available to the public. The other actor whose ashes are interred here is Thomas Mitchell. He played Uncle Billy. Now you probably remember he had a very pivotal scene because Hey Selfie Dude, live from Los Hi Angeles. <laughs> and it's only seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so here we are downtown LA, almost downtown LA, and uh, these girls are still partying, I guess. So anyway, Thomas Mitchell played Uncle Billy. And he's the one who accidentally lost the money that Mr. Potter found and kept and used to threaten bankruptcy on George and his uh, business. So Uncle Billy was cremated and his ashes are stored here in Voltage as well. So it's kind of interesting that uh, two of the actors from um, It's a Wonderful Life are both uh, interred here. I don't know if they were friends in life, if this was on purpose, or if this was just coincidental. A lot of coincidences here. There are an awful lot of very famous people who were cremated here and whose ashes are interred here, either publicly on view or in voltage, so it could have just been coincidental. Actor Frank Phelan had a couple of very memorable scenes in the movie playing Ernie, the cab driver. You may remember Phelan for his role as Herbert T. Gillis, Dobie Gillis' dad, on the popular TV sitcom, The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis, that aired from 1959 to 1963. Phelan died August 2nd, 1985, at the age of 79, from pneumonia in Burbank, California. He's buried here in an unmarked grave at the San Fernando Mission Cemetery in Mission Hills. Actor Frank Albertson appeared in more than 100 movies and TV shows during his career. In this film, he plays Sam Wainwright, George's successful business friend. And for some unknown reason, to me anyway, he greets everyone in the film with the phrase, hee-haw. If any of you happen to know where that came from, please share in the comments section below. Albertson died in Santa Monica, California, February 29th, 1964 at the young age of 55 from an apparent heart attack. He's buried here at Holy Cross Cemetery in Culver City on the hillside just in front of the mausoleum. Unfortunately, time and the weather have really faded his gravestone, making it very difficult to read. Actress Argenta Brunetti, who played Mrs. Martini in the movie, is interred just inside the mausoleum straight ahead. This was her film debut, but she went on to appear in nearly 70 movies, nearly 60 TV shows, and continued acting into her 90s. She died on December 20th, 2005, at the age of 98, from natural causes, in Rome, Italy. I'll pan around so you can see a little bit more of the corridor where her crypt is located. Actor, producer, director, and writer Sheldon Leonard is well remembered for his role as Nick the bartender in this movie, but he also appeared in nearly 75 other movies during his long Hollywood career but he's probably best remembered as the producer of some of the most popular TV sitcoms of the 1960s. He produced The Danny Thomas Show, The Andy Griffith Show, 
The Dick Van Dyke Show, Gomer Pyle USMC, I Spy, and quite a few others. And if you're a fan of the TV sitcom The Big Bang Theory, then you're probably already aware that the two lead characters, Sheldon Cooper and Leonard Hofstetter, were named in honor of Sheldon Leonard. Leonard died January 11, 1997, at the age of 89 in Beverly Hills, California. He's buried here at Hillside Memorial Park in Culver City, just a couple of rows away from actor Lorne Green from the TV series Bonanza. Child actor Carl Schweitzer, who became famous for playing Alfalfa on the Our Gang series, plays Freddy, a high school teen who has a crush on Mary. When Mary chooses George over Freddy, Freddy decides to get revenge, and during the high school dance, he turns the key that opens the floor to reveal a swimming pool underneath the gymnasium floor. It's a pretty memorable scene that backfires on him. Sadly, Schweitzer was shot and killed during an argument at the young age of 31 in Mission Hills, California on January 21st, 1959. And he's buried at Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Hollywood, California. The remaining cast members were either buried out of the country, out of the state, or cremated and their ashes were scattered, or the whereabouts of their final resting place is unknown at this time. If any of you watching happen to know where any of the other cast members are buried, please let us know in the comment section below. But at this time, these were the only members of the cast that I could find here in the Southern California area. So who was your favorite character? And what are your favorite memories from this holiday classic? Please feel free to share down below in the comments section. So happy holidays and happy new year. And I hope to see you on my next trip down memory lane.